Hello, welcome to our tutorial on Settlers of Catan. Settlers of Catan is a network building game that involves hand management and trading. It's for three to four players and it's suitable for ages 10 and up. In Settlers of Catan, players take on the role of settlers vying to develop the island of Catan. The goal of the game is to be the first to score 10 victory points. This is done by leveraging the resources on Catan in order to build roads, settlements, cities, as well as purchase development cards. The five resources readily available on the island of Catan are as follows. Ore, grain, lumber, wool, and brick. Now that we know a bit of the basics, let's move on to the game setup. Step one is to assemble the frame, which will contain the island. To do this, simply match the numbers on the edges of the frame pieces together. Next, take the remaining 19 terrain hexes and place them randomly inside the frame face up. After this, take the nine harbor pieces and place them randomly on top of each harbor in the frame. Then, sort the number tokens alphabetically by the letter that's printed on them, which is kind of weird, I know. But begin placing them on the terrain hexes in a spiral pattern starting from one of the island corners. Skip over the desert tile and instead place the robber there. Place the longest road and largest army cards beside the board. Sort the resource cards into their five stacks and put them face up next to the game board as well. Lastly, shuffle the development cards and place them face down next to the game board. You are now ready to start placing your settlements. Determine randomly who will set up first. The starting player will then place a settlement on an open board intersection and place a road adjacent to the settlement. Settlements are always placed on intersections and roads are always placed on the edges between tiles. The rest of the players follow clockwise, everyone placing one settlement and one adjacent road. Note that settlements can only be built on open intersections and can never be placed adjacent to any other settlements or cities. Once all the players have placed their first settlement, the player who went last in the first round then places a second settlement and attaches a road to that one. The other players then place their second settlements and roads going counterclockwise. This way, the player who placed the first settlement also places the last settlement. Once the second settlement is placed, each player receives their starting resources. For each terrain hex adjacent to their second settlement, they take a corresponding resource card from the supply. Now the game can begin. During every turn, there are three things that are done. The first is you roll the two dice. The sum on the dice determines which terrain hexes generate resources this turn. Any player that has a city or a settlement on a terrain hex indicated by the dice receives the corresponding resource cards. You receive one resource card for every adjacent settlement and two resource cards for every adjacent city. In the event a seven is rolled, no terrain hexes will produce resources, but instead the robber will be activated, which we'll talk about in a few moments. After generating resources, the active player may then trade cards in two ways. The first is they can trade cards with other players at the table. Note that you can't trade cards if you're not the active player, so the other players can't trade amongst themselves if it's not their turn. Players may also do maritime trades, which means that you can trade four of any one resource card for one of a different resource. This number can be decreased to three for one, or even two for one, if a player has a settlement or city adjacent to a harbor. Finally, players can begin to build to improve production, increase victory points, or just build up their road network. In order to build, players must pay specific combinations of resources from their hand. After discarding the proper combination, the player may then take a piece from their supply and place it onto the board. You cannot build more than what is available in your supply pool. There are three types of things a player may build. A player may spend one brick and one lumber to build a road segment. Roads must always attach to existing roads, cities, or settlements. The first player to build a continuous road of at least five segments receives a special longest road card, which is worth two victory points. If another player succeeds in building a road longer than the current owner of the longest road card, they may then take the card for themselves. A player may spend a brick, a lumber, a wool, and a grain in order to build a settlement. Settlements must always be connected to one of your roads, and remember that they must always be at least one intersection away from other settlements. No matter whose turn it is, settlements will generate one resource card when the terrain hex they are on produces resources. Settlements are also worth one victory point. A player may spend three ore and two grain to upgrade a settlement to a city. Cities generate two resource cards when a terrain hex there on produces resources. Cities are also worth two victory points. In addition to building settlements, cities, and roads, 
Players may also buy development cards at the cost of one ore, one wool, and one grain. Development cards are kept secret from the other players until they are played. Those are the main rules, but now let's move on to the robber and to development cards. If a 7 is rolled at the beginning of the turn, no resource cards are generated. Instead, any player with more than 7 cards in their hand must discard half, round it down, and return it to the bank. Then, whoever rolled the 7 is allowed to move the robber to any other terrain hex. After you move the robber, you may then steal one card at random from one player who has a settlement or city next to that terrain hex. Until the robber is moved, the terrain hex it is on no longer produces resources when its number is rolled. On any given turn, you can play one development card. However, you cannot play a development card on the same turn that you've received it. If you play a knight card, you may immediately move the robber as though you had rolled a 7, including stealing a resource card from another player. The knight stays face up in front of you. The first player to have three knights in front of them receives a special card for largest army, which is worth two victory points. If another player has more knights in front of them than the current holder of the largest army card, then that player takes the card for themselves. Progress cards have a green frame. Once they are played, you follow the instructions on the card, and then it is removed from play. Victory point cards award victory points. You must keep victory point cards hidden. They may only be revealed during your turn when you are sure you have 10 points, in which case you win the game. You may play any number of victory point cards during your turn, and they are the one card that may be played on the same turn they are purchased. The game is over when the first player reaches 10 points, and that is how you play Settlers of Catan. See you next time.